Hello, I'm David Hewson. This is my new book, The House of Dolls. And I'm just going to spend a few minutes with some pictures and videos to show you where this book comes from and how I got here. Those how to write books always seem to say write about what you know, but I never read one of those before I started on this game. My first book was set in Seville, and over the years I've been to Scotland, to Florence for the flood, three times to Venice, and of course to Rome, my favourite city in all the world, where I set the Nick Costa series. In fact, in more than 20 books, I've only ever set one once in my native England. And that's probably a book you've never even heard of. For someone like me, it makes much more sense to write about what I don't know. I'm lazy at heart, and that makes me work harder. In Rome, I had to start from scratch. I had to study the language to build my picture of Rome from the ground up, brick by brick. There are three basic elements to a book for me. The first is the world, and that's much more than location. It's about how a place smells and feels its local culture. The second is the cast, the protagonists, the antagonists, the foils, the supporting characters who give the story hopefully some depth. And finally there's the narrative, a succession of events and problems that our characters must wrestle with and solve. Mix those three together and you will get a book like this. But there is another way. What if these parts aren't equal and the world encompasses everything? and characters and narrative come out of that world rather than sit alongside it. I have a simple litmus test for my work. Could it happen elsewhere? Could the Nick Costa stories simply be transposed to Vienna? Would Sarah Lund work in Birmingham? If the answer is yes, I've got something wrong. If you want to work like this, first you must build your world before your characters and before your plot. There really is no alternative. So how do I go about starting my new story world of Amsterdam? Well, first of all, with a bit of luck. It's a city I've visited many times over the years, and I always stay here at the Ambassada, because that's the hotel where writers stay. A few years ago, I wandered aimlessly away from the city centre back into a local district like this. And pretty soon, I found myself here. Ellensgracht by the Berenstraat Bridge, an area I now know to be called the Jordan. My story antennae started twitching straight away, because this was clearly somewhere unusual. Statues of local singers in the street. Cobblestones and local colour, and then by chance there was a bar. I seem to recall it was quite a hot day, and well, research is research. I learned a lot in this little bar called De Elland, which I've loosely translated to another place called the Dree Varten in the book. And I started to get a taste for this unusual, slightly eccentric neighbourhood of Amsterdam. Stand on the Berenstraat Bridge, and there's this, for example. Unique, and I'm always looking for the unique. Canals, as beautiful by day as they are haunting and slightly creepy by night. And where you have canals, you have inevitably houseboats. Some of them are quite swish, some of them sort of swish-ish, and a few, well, the least said the better. Then I need to start nosing around and looking at how people live. Pretty tightly packed together for one thing, this is a community. It has a distinctly Dutch sense of fun. Here's a bunch of people off for a Sunday outing. It's a place that's always in motion and very casual too. Look at these two girls having chips outside the little chip shop right in the centre. Good chips too, very much an Amsterdam tradition. And then there are the bikes. Hey, Alex, you're with banana. 
They're everywhere. There seem to be more bikes than people at times. Cyclists come at you from all directions and don't always bother with lights at night. I've nearly been mown down on many occasions, but I can live with it. Terry Pratchett clearly couldn't, however. This is a rich world full of potential. If I can't find a story here, I should get myself another job. From that very first time I visited Ellensgracht, I had a picture in my head of a man, a lost man, living in a boat on the canal. He's got a name now, Peter Voss. Voss is Dutch for fox. This is not insignificant. The boat's like his life, a mess. A tragic event in Voss's past has destroyed him, something that is connected to a historic doll's house. And his only company, is a little wire fox terrier called Sam. Why the dog? Because you see a lot of dogs in the area and some of them do ride in the baskets of their owner's bikes. More importantly, Sam tells us that Voss isn't really as lost as he thinks he is because lost people wouldn't keep a dog like him. Laura Backer is the young woman police officer determined to bring Voss back into the fold. She's firm of opinion Quite judgmental, nothing like him at all. She's also a stranger in a strange city. Laura's a farm girl from Friesland in the north of Holland and very much out of place in Amsterdam. And she rides a bike the way that Terry Pratchett hates while texting all the time. This is not a cliched will they, won't they relationship. There's respect, some affection and no small amount of friction between them and each thinks the other has a life that needs fixing. Now for an antagonist, Vim Prinz, a posh lawyer turned politician. Prinz is one of those people who's sure he knows what's best for everyone. He's turned up on the city council with a plan to crack down on drugs and prostitution in the red light district, and that's made him lots of enemies. His daughter's gone missing, but he thinks this is just a trick to get more money out of him. And he's not quite the saint he seems. Finally, a second antagonist, Theo Janssen, a likeable but violent criminal boss. Theo is Amsterdam born and bred and used to be king of the city. He's your best friend and your worst enemy. And he's about to come out of jail after throwing off a couple of trumped up charges. But he has his secrets too, and they lie in the unlikely surroundings of a quiet religious courtyard in the centre of the city. We've now got some principal characters. How about a story? Narratives begin with problems, questions that need answering. Peter Voss has been summoned back to the police to investigate the disappearance of Prince's daughter, but he doesn't think he's up to the job. Prinz himself is about to discover it's really not that easy to turn back the clock. His daughter's missing, his political allies are proving flaky, and perhaps he has feet of clay. As for Theo Janssen, he thinks he's headed for freedom. But Amsterdam's changed while he's been inside, and not for the better. A world, characters, questions that need answers, problems that require solving time I got writing.